Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this morning. You know, I, I really do. I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this time that I had together with you. <sighs> Praying and going over your word and walking the dog and praying in tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was good. It was good. Hallelujah. I thank you and I love you. And, I'm, and you're such a good dad to me. You're such a good father and I love you and I praise you. <sighs> and I ask that you bless this word as it goes forth. Anoint me as your mouthpiece. Use me. Illuminate me. Give me revelation. Show me what you want me to say. I'm your servant, Lord. Here I am. Use me for your glory and cause each person's heart to be good ground to receive the, the word, the seed of the word of God richly in their hearts so that they can produce a hundredfold. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Hallelujah. It, the title of my message is You Can Hear God's Voice, but then the subtitle is Created in His Image because it's kind of sort of going to be a series, but I'm probably not going to do the series every Sunday after, you know, every Sunday, because next Sunday is Steve Brower. Pastor Steve Brower will be ministering here. Hallelujah. Um, but uh, I'm going to be on a journey. And so this is how you can hear God's voice, but understanding that you're created in his image, because as you understand that you're created in his image, that will help you to know who you are so that you can then train yourself and be with the Lord and hear his voice. So I will start with Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Notice, male and female is only two. He created them. God created you to have fellowship with him, and he wants to speak to you. He really does. He wants to speak to you, and he wants to have fellowship with you. That's why he created you. He also wants you to hear his voice, because that's what will help us get on over in this life if we heed, hear and heed his voice. And he sent the Holy Spirit here to talk with us and to help us. The Holy Spirit is our counselor, our guide, our advocate, our minister, our teacher, our comforter, and our mentor. He is all those things to us, and he is awesome. And I am so thankful for the Holy Spirit living inside of me as a born-again believer. And you can develop your spirit. You can. And increase your ability to hear God's voice. In this earth realm, it is possible to hear many kinds of voices, as you might already have learned. You can hear voices from your body. Your body has a voice. Your mind, will, and emotions, which is your soul. And the spirit realm, which could be for good or for evil. You must be aware that demonic activity can deceive you. So you must be careful. You must use discernment. You must always be, always be reading the word of God and meditating on it to strengthen your belief system and your spirit. I'll never stop stressing that. We need to have more self-feeders in the body of Christ. Those are people that feed themselves every day the word of God, not just come for um, one meal on a Sunday and maybe a snack on a Tuesday night, even though Tuesday nights is another meal. But, <laughs> but and we're in the book of Acts right now. Um, but, you know, you must be reading that word of God. You must be getting it in your spirit. You should also be praying in the Holy Spirit, in tongues, to build yourself up. For Jude, chapter 1, there's only one chapter, verse 20, but you, beloved, he calls you beloved, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. That's like charging your batteries, your spiritual batteries, when you pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, I will always go into it. You are pray the Holy Spirit is praying through you the perfect will of God for your situation, for others' situation, for everything and anything. You just trust him. You have to yield to him. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need to be instructed in this, and you need to yield to the Spirit of God. That's what baptized, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and allowing him to pray through you is yielding to him. It's total trust. And just know that those low-level devils are always going to try to talk you out of it. They're going to say, that's not real. It's babble. 
it's not real, you sound dumb. If they're working so hard to convince you that it is, it, it's not real, just know that they're liars like their father, and it's the total opposite. It is the real deal. The Bible clearly teaches that tongues are for today. For on the day of Pentecost in the upper room, starting off with the first 120 at the birth of the church, that was the birth of the ecclesia, the Bible says in Acts 2.4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so that's what the Holy Spirit does. And it's a gift, and you get to. You should want to. It's powerful. It takes the chicken out of you. The Holy Spirit takes the chicken out of you. 2 Corinthians 5, 6, well, hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll read 5, 16, and 17. <sighs> Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according, according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, the first verse was a little confusing. So I would like to pull it up in the Passion Translation, 2 Corinthians 5.16. Okay. So from now on, we refuse to evaluate people merely by their outward appearance or their flesh. For that's how we once viewed the anointed one. But we no longer do we see him with limited human insight meaning we now see him in the spirit, and we are in the spirit. Hallelujah. Um, John 3, okay. One of the things necessary to hear God's voice is to be born again. If you're not born again, you can't see into the things of the spirit of God, so you need to be born again. For those within the sound of my voice that do not know... <laughs> Becoming born again happens when you ask Jesus to sit on the throne of your heart and give your life over to him. That's what it really is. Taking yourself off the throne, me, myself, and I get removed, and you place him on the throne of your life. Jesus um, said in John 3.3, 3, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Born again. Jesus coined the term. I have so many people that go, what kind of church is that? Born again? Like it's a title. Guess what? Jesus is the one who coined the words. He's the one who said it. So if he said it, then that's it. That settles it. Born again. Yes, we're a born again church. <laughs> I love that. It's like, you born, you're one of those born again people? It's like, you should want to be too, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. So um, you need to express your faith, your trust in Jesus, the Son of God, to be born again, who died for your sins. I'm going over the salvation message. You must believe that Jesus died. He was buried. He rose from the dead, and he ascended to the right hand of the Father in heaven. When you accept Jesus as your Lord, I don't just say Savior. I always like to say Lord because Savior, people, too many people treat him like their Savior and not their Lord. He's your Lord. He's your master. You do what he says. Your life is not your own. He purchased you with his blood. And when you ask Jesus as your Lord, the Holy Spirit will come into your life, come inside of you. And the Holy Spirit will change your heart, and you will know that your sins are forgiven. For he will give you that assurance that they are. And you truly will be a new creation in Christ. When you're born again, old things have passed away, as I read before. But, but, but. You must still live out your life on this earth realm, which we know is not an easy thing, right? And the Father wants you to find out what he has done for you through his son, Jesus Christ. But you must, 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 must always be seeking and pursuing him and his word. You have to be God chasers. You have to seek his word. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now, you know, you read that, well, we must believe that he is. Well, yeah, I believe, I believe in God. Well, so do the demons, okay? They believe and they shudder and they tremble. You have to believe, cling to, rely on, and trust. Give your life over to him. Believe that he is. 
the Lord God Almighty, and he's your Lord. And then he is, he's going to reward you when you diligently seek him. When you're born again, it is then that you are equipped to hear the voice of God. Because everyone that is born of the Spirit can or now has the ability to hear God's voice. I wrote in my little notes here. And it's true. When you're born of the Spirit, you can hear the voice of God. Before that, you really can't. I mean, God in his mercy will talk to us before we're saved, and he will send us messages, and he will send us people to plant seeds. Thank the Lord God Almighty that he is always pursuing us. And it's even greater when we respond to his wooing. Some children of God have not been able to hear God's voice because we live in a fallen realm. Many do not know the word of God, unfortunately. That's why we need more self-feeders. So if, they're, if they don't know the word of God, then they're not, built, they're not built up. They're not building themselves up in their most holy faith. They may not be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then they cannot hear God's voice, even though he is speaking to them. A radio. Think of a radio. God is speaking to you all the time on a certain frequency on the radio dial. But if you're not tuned into his frequency, he could be constantly talking to you and you're not going to hear his voice. You have to get in his presence, read the word, pursue him, get quiet, let him train you to hear his voice. And that's how you get onto his radio frequency so that you can hear his voice. Just know he is always talking to you. It is us that we're missing it when we don't hear his voice. And then I mentioned here carnal. The epidemic of carnal Christianity will cause people to ignore the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit, he is so wonderful. He's always convicting us of sin, which means he's convincing us of sin in our lives. And he does it in the most gentle, perfect way, personalized to each human being, that he is too irresistible to resist. But there are people that will resist the conviction that comes at them. And when they do that, their hearts get hardened and their ears get plugged up and they can't hear the voice of God. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, let us, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Does that sound like more than one person? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and he, female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Let us make man in our image. And, of course, that represents the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God's original intent for man was to have a creation that not only looked like him, but was also like him in many ways. He wanted someone to talk to. He wanted to have communion and fellowship with. That's why he made us. He wanted a family. You don't ignore your loved ones, right? You don't ignore your family unless they're toxic. But if you have really good family members that you love, your husband, you, you know, you actually get along with him or you get along with your wife and you have a healthy marriage or, or just your daughters and your sons and your brothers and your sisters and your uncles, people that are in your life, your friends, your good friends, you don't ignore them. You nurture the relationship. I remember someone telling me, um, if, if you want a friend, be a friend. And so just like we would not ignore our family members and we would nurture our relationship with them and talk with them and, 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 and want to please them and they want to please you, that's what the Father wanted. That's the reason why he created us in his image because he wanted someone to talk to. He wanted someone to bounce off ideas. Maybe if Adam and Eve didn't mess up, they might have been part of the continuing creation, who knows? So God would come down in the cool of the day. I mean, Adam and Eve had it so good. And he would visit them in the garden and walk with them. 
When Lucifer saw the close and intimate relationship that God had with Adam and Eve, he became jealous. Remember, he was the bright morning star. He was up there once. He was in charge of worship. He was made of all these pipes and everything. If you, you, know, you could read, find that in the word. That's why he uses music today, to corrupt. If you listen to songs backwards, you'll find a lot of demonic messages in there. And, and they, they use certain frequencies that cause disorder and chaos. They even changed the hurts. Oh, I'm not too good at music, but I know that music used to be set to a different frequency or hertz, and they changed it. And they did it because they wanted to bring disorder. They wanted to bring chaos, these nefarious ones at the top. I just want you to be aware, Satan uses music, okay? You have to be careful with what you listen to. And especially, I mean, you might think, well, you know, yeah, she's a Luciferian, but I like that song. Well, guess what? You might like that song, but now you're letting the demonic into your life by listening to people who worship the devil. So he became jealous because he was fallen. He fell to the earth. You know, he lost fellowship with God, you know, because he wanted to be God. Silly guy. The fall of man was initiated by a jealous cherub working through the serpent. Adam and Eve separated from God and lost their relationship with him, which is very sad. But here's the good news. Jesus came back to redeem us. I love the word redeem because every time I see the word redeem, he bought us back. Jesus came back to buy us back out from under the devil. And he, bought, he redeemed us, and we are made in the image of God, and he came to restore us once again to the Father in the born-again experience. Through Christ, we have, we have an even great, oh, I love this. We have an even greater covenant, the New Testament, his last will and testament. Remember, he died. He left, he left us a last will and testament with greater promises from God. We're made in his image, and we have the voice of God inside of our spirit because we are born again. In God's image, we can speak. Thank God, because you don't see the animals doing that. We can speak. We can reason. We can hear. We can see. We can make decisions. We can converse because we're made in his image. In his image, we can listen to God. We can listen to God. We can listen, and he can listen to us. He always listens to us. And we can talk with God, and we can walk with God, and he can walk with us. I want to walk with God. You know, sometimes I guess if you're alone and you're taking a walk and you're praying, you can, it's almost like you can sense his presence walking with you. I mean, he's even closer than that because the Holy Spirit is in us. I love that so much. It's so awesome. So, oh, man, my thumb. My husband, when I used to hold my, the microphone like this, my husband was like, I never saw anybody hold a microphone like that. It's like, well, hon, oh, my thumb hurts. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to talk about growth in Christ. Second Peter 1, 3, and 4. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, his divine power gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, the knowledge of him. Knowledge. It's not just knowledge of his word, knowledge of him. And it's not just like, I know about God. No, knowledge to know intimately. You know, like when, um, you know, like they would go into the tent after they were married and he knew her, you know, intimate. God wants us to know him, and knowing his word, knowing him intimately. Let me go back. So his divine power gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So it comes through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue, by, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust or desire. Desire is another word for lust. It's not always sexual. I sound like my husband. <laughs> That's okay. He was my mentor. So exceedingly great. 
Get yourself a promise book. Meditate on those exceedingly great and precious promises in the Bible that are for you. Speak them over yourself. Today, I was praying two um, prayers in Ephesians and one in Colossians over a person in the church. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start making a list of everybody in our church that I can start at least taking turns praying scripture over our family members of this body. Because it, there is power in the word of God. And these exceedingly great and precious promises are for us. And that they are made so that we can be partakers of the divine nature. What does that mean? I'm not quite sure. But I want to be part of the divine nature. And I think it's because we are made in his image. We gave our life to Christ. We are born again. And then if we really want to walk on his divine nature, we speak those divine and precious promises over ourselves. But it's not like we have to remind him. He does say, put me in remembrance of my word. But it's also that we get, get them deep, deep, deep down in our hearts so that we are convinced that we know in our knower that we know who we are in Christ and all these precious promises, and we can stand on them. And no matter what the circumstances are before us, no matter what the facts are before us, we can rest on the promises of God. And, you know, you don't have to deny the facts that you're going through. What you're going through might be a fact, but the truth overrides the fact. So while you're going through it, you just speak the truth of God over your life and keep doing it and keep believing God and hold on for dear life until the circumstances change. And if the circumstances change, it might be that you're just taking a transition into heaven to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. It doesn't matter. You just keep on keeping on because we have no choice. We're in a war. We are in a war. Wow, that was not me. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you can be a partaker of the divine nature through God's promises. You have been restored to the Father. Thank you, Lord. And you are a child of God. And you have a Father that loves you. And he wants to talk to you. He wants to commune with you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with you. Now let's talk about authority. In Luke 10, 19, it says, Behold, this is Jesus. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's Jesus right there, telling us he gave us all authority. And this is before he even shed his blood. His blood was shed so that we can walk in his authority. Not in our own, in his authority. Jesus restored the authority given to us by God. If you are born again, then you are redeemed. And your dominion is reestablished through Jesus Messiah's death and resurrection. You have dominion. You have dominion where you live. You have dominion over your house. You have dominion over your town. You have dominion over Nassau County or if you live in Suffolk County or Long Island. I always, I'm always talking over Long Island saying this is the Lord's Island. I live here. So I have authority here. I have dominion here. There's open heaven over this church. God is doing things. I invite the angels of the Lord Most High to come and get to work. Wake us up. Have his way here. We are in authority. We have dominion in Christ. You can experience deliverance personally when you're in Christ and you have authority and dominion. That's called personal deliverance or a self-deliverance. You know, you don't always have to have somebody pray over you. You can get along with the Lord Jesus. Let him give you therapy. Let him give you deliverance. He can do it. He can heal you of your past wounds. When you administer your authority, you have dominion over serpents and scorpions and over all. I love that. Power of the enemy. He bled. He died. He defeated Satan. He rose again for you to have this authority. So don't take it lightly. It's not being proud to say, I walk in the authority of Christ. It's actually being humble because you know that he is the great authority. He gave you his authority. He gave you a job to do on this earth. And he said, do it. If you love me, obey me. Walk in my authority that I've given you. Trample on these serpents and scorpions. He made an open show of Satan. He took his power. 
Satan only has power to deceive. Yes, he loves to give disease and everything. But you know what? Then we take our authority over him. Every time he does something bad to us, let's make him regret it. Let's go out there and give money to the poor and pray over people. Let's do things to make him regret messing with us. I think I want to really start doing that. Oh, you messing with me, Satan? Okay. All right. Let's see. What can I do to make you upset? You know? I mean, sometimes you just got to ignore him. And he'll be like, oh, I'm not getting the uh, reaction out of her. Okay, let me move on to a weaker Christian. Guess what? Don't be that weaker Christian. Don't be that weaker Christian. So I'd like to ask you, ask you to ask yourself this question. You can go home with this question and ponder it. In what area of your life is the Holy Spirit showing you that you need to take authority over? That's rega regarding self-deliverance. So ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is in me that I need to take authority over and give over to you and, and repent and take authority over and walk in victory? Holy Spirit, show me. We all are works in progress till we leave these earth suits. So let's revisit the Trinity. So in Matthew 3, 13 through 17, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you're coming to me? But Jesus answered and said to him, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Okay, let's see. Let's talk about that. Jesus led by example. Everything he did, he expects us to do. That's why he was dedicated when he was a baby. That's why he was baptized as a grown-up. That's why he cast out demons. Everything Jesus did, that's why he would go to the mountain to a quiet place, to the secret place, and pray every day and talk to his father. Everything Jesus did was by example for us to follow. So he had to get baptized to give us an example to follow. And if he, if he the son of God, can get baptized, um, who are we to say that we're not going to? All right, back to the scriptures. Verse 16, when he had been baptized, because we're talking about the Trinity now, Jesus came up immediately from the water, that's Jesus. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. That's the Holy Spirit. And suddenly a voice from heaven um, came saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That was the Father. The account of Jesus' baptism tells us how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit appeared together in the same place. Three in one. Three. I'm, I'm, I'm Jessica, but I have a spirit, soul, and body. My soul has a mind, will, and emotions. Three. He made us in his image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three in one. It's definitely beyond our comprehension. Maybe we'll get it when we get to heaven. But just know, there's three of them. Three in one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. Think of the sun. You see the sun, that's the Father. Um... It was, it was a really good illustration from Good Morning Holy Spirit. You see the sun, then you see the rays, that's the sun, and you feel the heat, that's the Holy Spirit. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so, so to be able to, okay, so la, 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 la. Oh, another time that the Trinity appeared was in Genesis when God said, let us make man in our image. I mean, he would say, let me make man in my image, but he said, let us. Who's he talking to? He ain't crazy. He's talking to the, the Son and the Holy Ghost. To be able to hear from God, it is important to establish these facts about the Holy Spirit, to try to understand the Holy Spirit, that there's a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that there are many more met dimensions in the spirit realm than our realm. I can't wait to learn all this stuff when I get to heaven. We are so on a need-to-know basis. We, think of it. We are like privates in the army of God, and we are on a need-to-know basis. There is so much more disclosure, but <laughs> I guess we can't handle it while we're in these earth suits. But the Holy Trinity is three persons in one, and they are all in your life. God the Father can speak to you. God the Son can speak to you. God the Holy Spirit can speak to you, and they can reveal themselves to you. The Father has done all of this for us. Jesus came and restored the Father, 
his creation called man. We are redeemed through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus was the currency that brought us back. And now everyone can come to God, believe and be saved. Praise you, Jesus. I'd like to re uh, read Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you, I'm trying to show you that as we're made in the image of God, we are like him that will show you as you understand that, that we can talk to him. But talking is easy. It's the hearing part for us that's so hard. And that's really about reading his words and getting still before him. We're just not still. We have those phones. We're always in a rush. So much life throws at us. Believe me, I know. There's sometimes that my day from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, it's like it was just coming at me one after the other. And I had no time. I had and I wanted to be with the Lord, and I, and I try to practice his presence throughout the day, but I had no time that day to be still, and I suffered for it. Nobody else. He's always waiting. Isaiah 46, 9 through 10 says, Remember the things I have done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God, and there is none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it happens. Everything I plan will come to pass for I do whatever I wish. God already knows everything. He's outside of time. Pastor Rob used to always say, like, um, time is like, you know, a parade. It has a beginning and an end. And God is outside of time. And he looks at time and he sees the beginning and the end. So he knows everything. He declares the end from the beginning. Things that are not yet done. His pleasure was that he designed this plan of redemption through Jesus Messiah, slain from the foundation of the world. Each of your days was written in a book before any of them came to be. And that is in Psalm 139, 16. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. God saw your body being formed in the mother's womb, and he knew you long before you were ever born. I wonder about that. Were we all little spirits up in heaven, and then he sent us down to bodies? I don't know. I, I don't know. But I think that is totally cool. He always, know, he, he, knows, he always knew us, and he knows us better than ourselves, which is so cool to me. The Holy Trinity knew everything before it happened. God has already known every moment of your life, which is amazing. But yet we have a free will. I think there's probably, you know how there's so many dimensions outside of this realm? There's probably so many storylines, but God knows which one will ultimately go down. Our will could always make us go off. But I also think that the Lord, even when we go off the path, the Lord has a way to bring us right back onto that path. He is so merciful. So he has given you your will, emotions, mind, and the way you reason. And that can work with God or against him. Your understanding of this will have to do, uh, your understanding of this will have to do a lot with hearing God's voice. That's why I'm trying to explain to you who you are in Christ. You are made in his image and you need to be still so that you can Turn the radio dial to his frequency and hear his voice. And I'm not saying that I'm there because I'm not there. I'm still always, uh, you know, like I said, we're all works in progress. We're all in training. Some can hear God's voice easier than others. I want to hear his voice easier. But then again, sometimes we totally miss it. And he said something to us and it was a thought impression and we just totally bypassed it. And then it was like, wait, 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 what? Lord? He's so good. The Apostle Paul talked about the fact that he had killed Christians and done all sorts of terrible things, and we know that. Yet, he said that he was set apart as an apostle from birth. So the man went around killing Christians, but then after he gave his life to Jesus, he said, I was set apart as apostle from birth, meaning he obviously, the Lord revealed to him, this was your destiny before you were born. You went off in a zealot kind of way, but I brought you back. I had to knock you off your high horse. So, you know, we could always pray, Lord, if I'm on the wrong path, knock me off my high horse. 
get me right back onto the right path. Paul had received the revelation that God foreknew everything about him. God knew in advance that Paul would be an apostle and do amazing things for the kingdom of God. Do not worry about things that have already happened in your life. That's under the blood. You repented, it's, it's, it's done. Don't bring it up. It's in the sea of forgetfulness. He'll never bring it up. If you bring it up to the Lord, he'll be like, what are you talking about? My, my son, what, my son's blood is not strong enough to wipe that clean, to erase it? Of course it is. You know, and that's what you got to tell people when they are so under condemnation. I could never be forgiven. I've done too many bad things. Oh, so what you're saying is that Christ dying on the cross for you and shedding his blood wasn't powerful enough to cleanse you? Of course it was. <sighs> So do not worry about things that already happened in your life. God has taken care of all that through Jesus, Messiah's death and resurrection. Concentrate on what is ahead for you and the plan that God has for your life. So your obligation, your obligation is to get alone and quiet with God. Read and learn his word. Wait on him and let him train your ear to hear his voice. Talk about being in God's will. Before Pastor Rob died, you know, he was always, a couple of years, you know, he was saying, all right, in the event of my death, I want you to take over. I want you to be president and pastor, you know. But then he looked at me and he said, but do you want to? And I, and I said, well, how could you ask me that? It's not what I want. I'm a soldier in the army of God. I'm... I'm a king's kid. I'm the daughter of the king. So if there ain't nobody to do it, here I am, Lord, use me. I will do what he wants me to do as long as he wants me to do it. And that's the way we should be in our walk with God. Whatever the Lord wants, it's his, his will be done. It is what it is. <laughs> so um, that's my, my sermon for today. I just really wanted you to understand who you are in Christ, that you are made his, in his image, and he desires for you to hear his voice. So get alone with God and learn to train your spiritual ears to hear his word and to hear his guidance, to hear his instruction, his direction. And if your ears are clogged up, it's probably because you got some repenting to do. So go turn yourself into the Lord God Almighty and get, you know, just... Get some business done. Get some business done. So, Father, I thank you for this word. I, I do. I thank you for this word. I really enjoyed, I enjoyed it myself. I don't know about anybody else, but I enjoyed it very much, and I thank you for the word. It was, it was set in my heart, and I want to go forward knowing that I'm made in your image, and what an honor to be made in your image, and that I want to please you, and I want to hear your voice. And I pray that everybody here wants to please you. And they want to hear your voice. And they want to walk in victory as a soldier in the army of God. To bring your plans, purposes, and pursuits about in this earth. For your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.